We live in a world where underperformed students are undermined, condemned, and marginalized, and the overachieving students are stuck and hindered from maximizing their potential. That's why we want to arrange students in classrooms based on their intelligence and academic performance, rather on their age, also with the concern of ageism and bullying that's happening in the education in the world. Four points of mechanism today. Firstly, we'll do an evaluation test after elementary school and after junior high school. That means it cannot be used as a selection method to pursue higher education. But thirdly, the standardized test will be made according to each country's education system and curriculum. Thirdly, we'll test the academic capabilities such as social studies, math, science, but we're also going to test their scholastic potential tests or TAPA as in Indonesia. But fourthly, we're also going to accommodate decent and qualified teachers to every classes. That means that we're not going to give or provide bad teachers in a lower ranked class that's unfair. One point of disclaimer, we don't think that students that have significantly less academic performance is unintelligent. We understand that some students are underperformed due to their environment, education system, or they have a lack of comprehension to certain subjects. Two things I'm going to talk about. Firstly, on how, how the system has been disenfranchising underperformed students, but secondly, how it's going to be helpful for students and teachers to excel in their subjects. First argument on how it has been disenfranchising to students. Underperformed students are badly left behind in their studies and they lack years of education. They get left behind for years in high school. They get to high school to at the age of 18, for example, as opposed to 13 or 14. This is why, because in developing countries like Indonesia, Malaysia, and Latin American countries, there are children that skip school for two reasons. Firstly, they live in poverty, which means they have to help support their family's financial situation that's to also work and get blue-collar jobs, or that this means that they don't have time or energy to study. But there are also students from middle to low class who cannot afford tutors even if they can go to school. They cannot afford extra classes such as Intan or BTA to help their studies. So it's very much for them hard to get to higher education or to comprehend lessons. But secondly, there are students who have lesser cognitive capabilities, which means they have difficulties to comprehend like simple or like to complicated situations and concepts such as math or biology and chemistry and whatnot. These students are also afraid to ask questions because of the pressure that they have, meaning that the, they are afraid to ask help from friends or their teachers from fear of being judged. They are scared that they're alone, that they are the ones who don't understand the subject and the others and the smarter ones do. Second layer, on how status quo government have failed to provide inclusivity and accessibility in education. Some of us are very fortunate that we can get free public school in Jakarta. Unfortunately, the vast majority of students in the world can't afford that luxury. Two reasons why. Firstly, there are the ones who cannot afford to pay the tuition, which means that students who have a huge trade-off the moment they choose to go to school, which means they have to take loans and their parents will be burdened with this kind of thing. Their parents have to work three jobs on a day, for example. They themselves have to work to afford lunch money and food. But secondly, there are little to no accessibility. The scenario happens in rural areas such as in borders of countries or like a rural area such as in Borneo Islands and in Papua. And it's because of the lack of infrastructure, like as basic as roads, bridges, or mass transportation to transport them from their homes to their school. This is the reason why there's a lot of children who drop out of school. They're overwhelmed. They are tired and exhausted by the stigma, they are exhausted by the burden of paying tuition and whatnot. And the problem here is that it's unfair that these kids who got dropped out or quit and failed to graduate gets condemned and marginalized in the society and gets the stigma that they're lazy or they don't uh, like education and whatnot. This is what we don't want to happen in status quo. Moving on to my second argument, how this will help students and teachers to improve their performance. We understand that teachers can be overwhelmed with the workload that they have to do. We also understand that they have a limited attention span to their students. There's a problem here is that it's very hard to accommodate students' needs. Three reasons why. Firstly, understand 
that the same age of student does not mean that they have the same academic performance. There are older students who need extra attention to understand simple mathematical questions. But there are also younger students who can understand a few minute lecture from their teacher and can go on to another lesson. This means that it's going to be very hard and saturated for the children to focus on each student because they have to cater to 15 to 30 students in each class. But secondly, teachers have the pressure to improve students' performance. The pressure comes in status quo from school rankings, standardized tests, college admission rate, and whatnot. If they fail to teach these students and improve or make the students become excellent students, which means if their students fail the test, fail the class, can't graduate, the teachers are the one who will be punished and condemned. Meanwhile, it's possible to try to comprehend all children with different performances to become excellent students. That's why a lot of teachers try to only adhere to some students who have a potential to go to college, for example, students who have easier comprehension and whatnot. But thirdly, bullying and seniority. This is the concern that worsens the circumstances because now school's attention is distracted to eradicate bullying because of the different age and classes like sophomore, juniors, and seniors, as opposed to focusing on creating the best method or creating the best education system in their school. This is why we want to propose that we should arrange student classrooms with academic performance rather than the age and apply our model in the status quo. The result of this model is then firstly, teachers can adjust their teaching method in each class. This means that in high performance classes, they can go through lectures and materials much faster. Students can study more efficiently and they can do a much complicated homework, for example. They can ask complicated questions without being scared that they will demotivate their uh, friends that are less in their academic performance. Now they can ask uh, very good questions on their subjects. They can know details of the subjects and whatnot. But B, teachers can focus on the underperformed students without the pressure to adhere to the others. That means that they can uh, adjust to make a more understandable concepts and simple concepts and complicated concepts, concepts understandable for students who are underperformed. But secondly, these teachers can adjust their motivational words during lectures. So firstly, they can talk about Ivy League or like a very high achieving college that don't give pressure to the underperformed students because they don't feel like or they feel insecure because of it. But secondly, now they can talk about and motivate underperformed students to inspire them and whatnot without having to ignore the high achieving students. Now they can adhere to the underperformed students and motivate them without having to demotivate them by talking about Ivy League or high performing uh, college. But thirdly, there will be no ageism, ladies and gentlemen. This means that they can treat others, even younger and older, with more respect. How is it likely? Because when the age is more saturated and not the academic performance, they have no choice but to get to know each other and work in group projects and go through several, several years at class together. That means they have to communicate, they have to talk about their um, assignments, they have to talk about their projects and whatnot. This means that they have a higher chance of communication uh, instead of in status quo, where it's very saturated with their junior, sophomore, and senior, where the communication is, is limited to extracurricular activities, for example. Now, in status quo with our motion, they will gain much more respect to each other regardless of their age. They will gain more perspective of the idea of being left behind in school, for example. Oh yes, I'm older than you, but I'm left behind. It's because ABC. And it will open much more perspective to other students. That's why we beg to propose.